Hey, what is up, guys, and welcome back. So, Maytek released a new wing flight controller. Now, this is meant for obviously RC wings, as the name states here. However, this is an F7 version. Not only that, they've added some extra features. So, let's go ahead and get started here. Now, as you can tell, they still kept that same really nice design, that soft mounted design with a bottom plate and as well as a top plate here to cover it up. And it's very well labeled all over. So, out of the box, they want you to install basically just two ESCs or two motors maximum, but you can obviously install more if you know how. And it's very simple. Just put two ESCs together on one pad, basically, and then you have three motors if you ever needed three motors. So here would go the ground for your ESCs. So if you have two ESCs, one, one ground ESC would go right there. The other grounds for the ESC would go here. And then here are the positive for the ESCs. Here's the battery input. Now the battery input is pretty crazy. It takes three to eight S LiPo, which is pretty cool. And obviously we got current sensing here and it's a very accurate current sensor. So that is a huge plus right out of the box here. Now, what we have different here, as I can immediately tell, is we have these new pads, which are the ends right there. So I guess these are not connected. So maybe some people by mistake would actually put the 5 volt out of their ESC, because some ESCs output 5 volt and then possibly burn it or something. Or they just made it ease of access. So if you wanted to put the um, servo type connectors just to plug it in and remove it, that's why they've probably set up, set up this layout right here for you, which is really nice and it's very user friendly. Now, let's take a look at some of the other features. Now, one important feature is obviously we have our OSD, the F7 microcontroller unit, and if we take a closer look on the bottom right, right here, we have the option to install two cameras and we can either give them 9 volt or 5 volt, which is really cool. So we do have the option now to put two cameras and that is a huge addition. That is a huge plus. And this is where you really want to see this uh, more than anything. The VX pads uh, can be chosen between 5, 6 and 7.2 volts. And now let's talk about how we would go about connecting this because I know some people don't really know how to do this. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that together here. Now, first of all, let's just say we wanted our receiver. So what you would want to do is depending, actually it doesn't depend anymore, whether it's IBUS or SBUS, this is an F7, so it has automatic inverter, so it doesn't really matter. So if you wanted to use SBUS, for example, even though it doesn't matter, I would set mine to the ground, 4.5 volt, it's, it's a, they call it 4.5 volt because this pad works with the USB connected. So it really helps you bind without having to plug in your battery and worrying, worry about taking off your props or anything of that nature. So you can set the positive right there for your receiver. And then you can put, put it either on RX3, RX1, or RX2. It's up to you. Whatever you like, you can go ahead and choose. It'll work for SBUS, IBUS, possibly even PPM. I'm not sure about PPM. But just put them on one of the R's and then uh, just make sure you take note of what number it was. Now, if you had something like a Spectrum, then you probably need the 3.3 volt, which is right there. And here's the ground. And then you also want to install your signal on one of the RX pads right here. Now, if you had some LEDs and you wanted to install some LEDs, then they would go on this line right here, which is LED signal. This would be the signal. This would be the 5 volt and this would be the ground for your LED. Buzzer, same thing. We have the negative buzzer and then the positive right here. You don't want to put the negative of the buzzer on the ground because it'll never work or it'll just stay on. So you want to make sure you find that BZ minus and put the ground of the buzzer there and the positive side would go to the 5 volt here. Now also another cool feature is we have eight servo outputs right out of the box. And obviously you can remap them to something else if you wanted to. I don't think the remapping option is fully ready just yet on iNav, but if you know how to play with the source code, you could possibly do that. All right, so for camera power selection, what you want to do is you want to check this out, VSW. VSW can be chosen either between a 9 volt and a 5 volt. And you do that with this right here. So if you wanted 9 volt, you would bridge these two together. And if you wanted 5 volt, you would bridge the bottom two together to make this pad either a 5 or a 9 volt. Now for camera one, as you can tell, C1, and this is C2 for camera two. For C1, it's automatically 9 volt. However, if you didn't want that 9 volt, what you can do is you can take 5 volts from this pad right here. So it allows you to choose this one what you want, which is a really nice feature and very well thought through. VTX is right here. This would be the yellow wire to your uh, VTX. 9 volt, they're giving you a really clean 9 volt regulator for your VTX, so hopefully you don't get any video noise. And then we also have the ground here, and obviously camera 1 and camera 2 up there. And here also they're providing us with another UART, which is UART 6, and some 5 volts in grounds as well. And another uh, I squared C protocol here, so we have two of those now. I don't know if they're the same exact thing, 
but I don't think it matters because it just works anyways by with a bunch of devices. So you have two places to access it, which is really cool as well. And if we take a look at the bottom here, we see a nice fat TVS diode right there. That is to protect from high voltage spikes. And it's kind of, you know, it filters the, the, the voltage spikes basically. Kind of like a capacitor in a way, but not really. And then here we have the SD card expansion or the SD card slot. So if you wanted to record uh, any of your black box log or any telemetry information, you can go ahead and do that, which is really cool. So out of the box, this has just about everything you need, except being able to turn on and off your VTX which would have been a really great feature here. Now, that, I think that's what they're going to do in their next release. I mean, it makes sense. Um, but yeah, the, the turning off non VTX, I mean, it's already available in our mini quads. And to be honest, this is where it really counts the most, in my opinion. Obviously, mini quads as well, but, you know, airplanes, while you have it stuck down on the ground waiting for the GPS to get locked, uh, that's where it really counts the most, but obviously we will be seeing it very soon. I'm pretty sure of that. This thing does have a barometer. It has everything you possibly need for a wing. And um, I'm debating on which wing to install this on. So we'll probably see its installation on something very soon and test it out. Now, however, I don't know if iNav is yet ready for the F7 microcontroller units. It's possibly still not optimized to run uh, very great and it might have some bugs, but I'm pretty sure that'll change in very near future if it has not already by the time I release this video. So overall, it's a nice piece of hardware. If you use the other ones, I mean here we're just going to get a couple more features, which is really cool. So so far, Matex releasing some of the best uh, INAV wing flight controllers that you could find on the market, which is really nice. And um, yeah, expect to see it's on the build very soon. And well, that's going to conclude it for this video, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.